What's going on, everybody? Steve here, Rake and Profit over at rakeandprofit.com. Coming back to you with another video. And in today's video, I want to share with you something pretty cool, something that I uh, utilized in my reselling business when I was first getting started as a reseller over five years ago. So over five years ago, I was working at a restaurant called The Cracker Barrel, and I was watching all these videos on YouTube, and I was learning about reselling, and I was watching a guy who only had about 200 subscribers, and his name was Chris with the Bonafide Hustler YouTube channel. And what he was doing was he was sourcing bicycles. He was buying them from thrift stores, garage sales, and from Craigslist at the time, and he was reselling them on eBay and then flipping them locally as well back on a Craigslist. So I was going to thrift stores, I was going to garage sales, and I was finding bicycles while I was working full-time at the Cracker Barrel, but the problem was I wasn't able to find enough bicycles. I wanted to make more money, so I knew that I had to find more bicycles to flip on Craigslist, that's what I was doing at the time, to you know save up enough money to quit my job. And I, you know, about five years before that, I was actually a bird dog. So I would actually put out these signs that said, we buy houses, and this is my old phone number. And what I would do is I would fetch phone calls and I would be looking for distressed sellers, people in foreclosure, people who had beat up houses, and essentially we would buy houses for cash. I was working with a money lender, so on and so forth. And um, I would field these calls. Well, a couple years went by, the market had crashed in 2008, and I had all these signs. So what I did is I flipped them upside down and I wrote, I buy bicycles. So this is a really cool idea that you can do locally, and I'm gonna talk about a couple of tips. So this is my old phone number, this was a Google Voice number, and um, I would essentially find polls, right? And I would, I would have a little step stool, and I would climb up to the, uh, to the step stool and I would reach as high as I can and I would bang them into the uh, into the poles. And I didn't know if this was gonna work or not. I didn't know if I was gonna get calls, but it was outside the box. I was hungry, I wanted to make money, and um, I started putting these things out and I started getting calls and I started just collecting some pretty great leads. And I remember one time I had purchased like six or seven bikes off of one reseller. It was actually a state over. I had to drive an hour. They were in the area for one reason. And I made like seven or $800 off that one flip. I had picked up Cannondales, Bianchis, all different types of bikes, specialized bikes, mountain bikes, road bikes. And these signs worked. Now, keep in mind when you put these bandit signs out, um, there's different town ordinances, right? Certain towns don't like it when you put the um, signs on the poles, so you're gonna get calls immediately to get them ripped down. Sometimes they'll threaten to fine you. Other times, towns don't care as much, so you can actually go on to the, the town website and do some research, or you can look around to see if there's bandit signs in your area. If there's a lot of like We Buy Houses bandit signs, you're probably gonna be okay. Um, but yeah, these things used to work like magic. Um, I don't, you know, this was, you know, four or five years ago, so I'm not sure how effective this is gonna be anymore, um, but just a great example of thinking outside the box. So many people are doing the same thing right now, going to thrift stores, going to garage sales. Everyone's doing the same thing. They're following the herd, and if you wanna separate yourself from the herd and get different results and scale your business faster, you always wanna be experimenting and uh, trying new techniques and new strategies. So. Just a cool little thing, I was at my parents' house, I'm actually there right now, and I found, I saw this little sign sticking out behind a bureau, and I pulled it out and I was like, oh my gosh, I remember when I when I was putting out these signs, and uh, just, you know, it's just cool. It's really cool to kind of look back and, and see how far you've come, and, and just a reminder of, you know, the hustle is real. You know, if you wanna have success, you've gotta go out there and hustle. We got Maggie Brees in the house saying, first time viewer in the live chat been watching, uh, I don't know if you said you were watching Rally Roots or you're getting uh, getting your roots planted, but either way, great to have you here. So uh, another quick tip with these, if you do get these, you can go to like banditscience.com and get them for like a dollar each, blank, and then put whatever you want. I buy video games, I buy whatever, and put your phone number. Get a Google Voice number because you're gonna get a lot of crazy calls, and also it'll somewhat detach your identity away from it in case you have any issues with the with the towns. Also, make sure, like a big mistake people make is they put these signs up in areas where cars are flying by. You wanna put these up near like stop signs or near um, you know traffic lights where someone's gonna stop and see it, right? So you've gotta position these in a um, orderly manner. You don't wanna put them in a place where someone's driving like 
70 miles per hour by, they're never going to see it. You're not going to get as many calls. So be very smart. What I used to do is I used to um, have a map, right? I used to have a map of, of the town and I would put little tiny stickers in the areas where I had put my bandit signs and I would cover, I would, I would canvas certain neighborhoods, right? So Tanya saying on the corner near stop signs, traffic lights, you can also get the ones with the metal stakes, right? It's going to cost you a couple extra dollars uh, or a couple extra pennies or whatever it costs. I never used them, but you can stake them into the ground. The only problem is those are going to get ripped down by competitors and the town is going to just pull over and rip them off. So I used to like stand on my tippy toes, get the little stepping stool and I'd put it up super high. So it would be challenging for the town to take it down. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes you would get calls, the police to department uh, called me a couple of times and I would just go take it down. That's why you want to have a map with, you know, with your territory of where you put these. But yeah, I had picked up quite a few books, uh, quite a few books, quite a few bikes off of this. And, you know, I, I suppose you can do this for pretty much everything, right? You obviously want to have a product that you're looking to buy that can make you enough money. Bicycles are, are one of them. Um, I probably wouldn't do books. I, w I don't know. I probably wouldn't do video games either. It's kind of odd. But you see some people saying like, I sell mattresses or I buy real estate. Um, sometimes there's like different HVAC companies who use these as well. But think outside the box. I'm not telling you to do this. I'm just sharing with you an example of something that worked for me. And at the time, you know, I, I made probably around $5,000 profit. I picked up a lot of bikes using these things, right? So this is a great example. If you didn't see the last video that I had posted, I think two videos ago, it's all about um, how to find more profitable inventory with want ads. Definitely check that video out. Bicycle. Did I spell bicycle right? <laughs> Let's hope I did. I think I spelled it right. Did I? Who knows? But either way, it worked. It was effective. Uh, but think about wanted ads. Think about these. Think about, you know, word of mouth. Tell people what you do. Putting out flyers. I used to do that as well. I used to print out flyers and I would put them in people's doors. I was crazy. I would do all different types of weird things. I was so hungry to quit my job. I was so hungry to find a way to not have a boss. I was starving in terms of not being locked into the clocking in and clocking out. So, if you're hungry enough and you're motivated enough and you're willing to do what it takes to think outside the box to put in the hard work, you can make this Amazon thing work, this reselling thing work, this eBay thing work. You don't have to sell on eBay or flip books on Amazon or sell bicycles for your whole life, but you can use that as a stepping stone, right? For me, you know, I've used reselling as a stepping stone to, um, you know, facilitate this YouTube channel and teaching and affiliate marketing. And I learned about Kindle publishing along the way and I've launched my own products and I don't have to rely on my eBay sales as much anymore and selling books. Even though I still do that, I don't have to rely on it because I used bicycles as a stepping stone to eBay and eBay to a stepping stone to Amazon and Amazon as a stepping stone to teaching and sharing my journey and learning about different things. So for you, you know, that might be a stepping stone into wholesale or private label or liquidation or starting up your own brick and mortar or an auction website or your own website or your own YouTube channel. So you never know what could spring out of, um, you know, planting a little seed like this. So um, people are asking what are the best types of bikes? Uh, there's a lot of different brands that I had picked up from Cannondale to Bianchi to Specialized. Um, there's so many different bicycles out there, but I flipped a lot of road bikes. The rallies were really good. Uh, the steel road bikes, obviously any aluminum bike with aluminum rims as well. I didn't, I wasn't like super knowledgeable when it came to vintage BMX, but I know those things sell really, really well. I know the Bonafide Hustlers flipped a lot of them, but I, I really never got into them. I never found them. They were pretty hard. Never flipped any elect uh, electric bikes either. Um, Eric saying smash that like button. I would appreciate that. But yeah, just wanted to share this. I thought it was cool. And um, hopefully you guys are having an amazing night. If you guys did enjoy this video and thought it was pretty interesting, you want me to share more stuff like this, uh, do me a big favor. What's up, Christina? Martin, good to see you. And smash that like button down below. The more likes this video gets, the more it gets out to people and helps people. And that's what this channel is all about, helping others to make money online, helping others to build a business, helping others to quit their job. And just, you know, enjoying life. This reselling game is, is fun. It's hard work, but it's a lot of fun. And, you know, I just got back home. I, I spent the last two hours hanging out with my mom. And we connected by going to uh, a couple thrift stores. We just went to Goodwill and Savers. And we found one book over there. I'm going to post it on my Instagram. So follow me on Instagram at Rake and Profit. 
We paid fifty dollars for this book. It's actually a, it's a collection of three books, and I'll post it on my Instagram. But it's selling for over two hundred fifty dollars, and there's no FBA offer. So we paid fifty. We're gonna probably put it up for three hundred three fifty and net about two hundred dollars profit. So it's really cool. Um, a lot of people are thinking, you know, why would you spend fifty dollars on a set of books? It's all about you know risk versus reward. I'll put fifty dollars down all day long to make four hundred percent return on my investment. So check out my Instagram. I'll show you guys what we found. That was a really cool uh, find, but uh, that's what this business is all about, guys. Having fun, building a business, building an income stream, and seeing where it goes. So thanks everybody for watching. Jameson says amen to that. I appreciate you guys. You guys are amazing, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.